Hey guys, we have the newly announced Boas and Wilkins PX7 S2 with us today. And well, this has been a long time coming. Before we start, I do have to note that because I tried these out before the official announcement, um, the Boas and Wilkins music app didn't actually recognize the headphones so I didn't have app support for when I was testing these. So anything that requires toggling or activation through the app, I couldn't test out. So I can't speak to as a lot of features that might be present in these headphones, I just didn't have the chance to try them out. But as a side note, these are actually the first headphones that are paired using the Bose & Wilkins music app as opposed to the Bose & Wilkins headphone app. Before we get into the review, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications so you don't miss out on upcoming videos. So let's talk design, starting with the case. This is actually quite a different look from the PX7's case being more oblong. There's also no awkward raised bulge in the middle, which is nice. Unfortunately, the case is still quite large because the headphones don't collapse in on themselves. Inside, you get a soft suede light covering along with a hidden compartment in the middle that holds a USB-C to C cable as well as a USB-C to 3.5mm cable. No flight adapter here, unfortunately. The headphones themselves are gorgeous, coming in black, which we have here, blue and grey. You get a matte black fabric covering the ear cups and the top of the headband, and around the ear cups, there's a shiny silver strip that really pops. The padding is plush, and wearing the headphones during my recent 16-hour flight from San Francisco was a breeze, thanks in part to the fact that there's basically no clamping force at all provided by these headphones. You might think that this is a good thing, and partially yes, but actually not really. More on that later though, but I just want to say that the wearing comfort of these headphones are really high. It's really super comfortable. According to my kitchen scale, these actually weigh ever so slightly lighter than the original PX7. These come in at around 306 grams, and the official weight states that they're supposed to be 307 grams. So yeah. The ear cups are also just slightly smaller than the Sony WH-1000X Mark V's roughly 5.5cm between the top and bottom of the padding. The yolks of the headband are plastic, unfortunately, as is the protruding part on the ear cups. But it's still a nice, matte plastic that doesn't attract fingerprints or oils. And at a glance, it still looks quite premium. The drivers inside are new, custom-designed 40mm biocellulose dynamic drivers, which is actually quite interesting because the original PX7 actually used 43.6mm drivers. But more on that later when we do the sound test. On the right ear cup, you get a slider for power and Bluetooth pairing and three buttons. Volume up, a multi-function button, and a volume down button. There's also a USB-C port here for charging or wired use. The multi-function button is OK. One press for play pause, two presses for track skip forward, and three presses for track skip backwards. On the left, there's a single button to toggle through ANC modes. Transparency, off and ANC on. Surprisingly, it seems like there is no on-ear detection or auto-off, although this could be locked behind the app, which I didn't have access to. I did get my hands on the press release though, which states that there is an EQ feature in the app now, which is a welcome change. The spec sheet also did say that there is a wear detection sensor in the headphones, but when I was listening to them and I took them off, uh, music still continued to be played. So yeah, it could be something that might need to be activated through the app. There was also once when I took the headphones off and when I wanted to listen to them again, like, you know, about a week after that, uh, they were dead. So I'm gonna assume no auto off, but uh, a quick charge with the Plains USB-A port actually provided enough power to let me listen to music for most of the flight. Speaking of battery, Boas & Wilkins has kept the same 30-hour battery life in these, although they have improved the quick charging, so now a 15-minute charge actually gives 7 hours of battery life as compared to 5, which is nice. These run on Bluetooth 5.0, surprisingly, um, which is a bit disappointing. I would have preferred to have seen this running on 5.2, but oh well. Unfortunately, I actually have no idea if these support multi-point connectivity because that could be a feature that's locked behind the app. 
So uh, we'll try and add a text overlay or comment down below if we can figure it out after we manage to add the headphones to the app. But now we come to ANC and I have to say that the ANC here is actually quite a bit better compared to the original PX7. But the problem with the more comfortable fit is that because the clamping force isn't quite as strong here as compared to the original PX7, uh, it doesn't seal quite as well, which means that you know, I when I was listening to music, I actually found myself trying to wriggle the, the headphones around, uh, press them in, that kind of stuff, to find the ideal position to get the best ANC. And on my flight, I actually found that the optimal position, for me at least, is when I was looking slightly downwards. I'm not 100% sure why, but I found that that position actually cancelled out the most uh, noise from the plane. Uh, of course, you know, it could be different for everybody, especially because I was wearing a mask and my glasses. So maybe it's a combination of all these different factors, but yeah, the reduced clamping force in this case isn't really the best idea. I think Boas and Wilkins could have actually increased the clamping force just a bit here, but regardless, ANC, once you get the ideal position, is top notch. So well done. Anyway, here's an ANC test for you guys. Take it with a pinch of salt because we'll be piping in you know, external noise and just talking to kind of simulate a real life environment, but the seal of these headphones on the dummy head might not be the best either. Microphone quality is okay. Uh, the headphone uses two microphones for voice calls. It's not great, but it will do in a pinch. As for sound quality, well, the PX7S2 still lives up to the Bowers and Wilkins standard. These sound awesome. There's pretty much no degradation in quality or clarity when ANC is turned on, and you get a coherent, detailed sound. The bass is stumpy and well controlled, with the ability to get plenty powerful if needed. No bass bleed into the mids as far as I could tell. As for the mids, this is the part that I really like. There's a beautiful warmth here and plenty of detail and separation for instruments. Vocals are a bit more upfront and emotional here, which I love. And for the genres of music that I listen to, pop mostly, these headphones work very well. One problem that I will note here though is that when there are a lot of instruments, the mix actually kind of devolves into a bit of a mess. But if there aren't too many instruments or you know if it's not too complex, um, all the instruments do have their own spot and it's actually perfectly fine in that situation. As for treble response, I personally like it a lot. There's bite and air in the upper registers and it's quite apparent in hi-hats and cymbals. But the best part of these headphones has to be the soundstage, and it's incredibly spacious. Instrument layering is nicely done as well, and in songs with plenty of vocal layering, you can hear the layers distinctly. There's plenty of detail in these headphones, and while there's no way you would consider these headphones for critical or reference listening, they are actually a really enjoyable pair to bring on flights or out and about, which, well, is what they're meant for. There's musicality here, the sort of musicality that makes you tap your foot and want to dance along. And honestly, that's what I'm looking for in most headphones. If my headphones can't make me enjoy my music, then what's the point? But thankfully, no such problem here. Anyway, here's a short sound test for you guys. Phones are priced at 399 US dollars or 597 Singapore dollars, and they should be available for pre order starting today, 29th June. I will be comparing these in a future video to the Sony WH1000X Mark V, the Apple AirPods Pro, and possibly the WH1000X Mark IV headphones as well, so stay tuned. Anyway, those are my thoughts on the new Bose and Wilkins PX7S2. If you guys have any comments or questions, leave them down below. Don't forget to subscribe to us and like this video. See you next one. 
See you guys.